Being 630, we'll call this meeting to order. So moved. Uh, second. Mo moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Uh, Walk-in period. Having none, moving on to uh, a one-day wine and wild beverage license. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Good, thank you. If you would just give me the name and the organization. Sure. Yep. Uh, I'm Carmel Martel, representing the Coral Arts Society. And this is our fifth year of having a cabaret event, February 20th, at St. Mary of the Nativity Center. We would like to have wine available for participants. Discussion from the board? No. Nope. A motion? Motion, please. Sure. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a one-day wine, <coughs> excuse me, and malt beverage license to the Coral Arts Society for a fundraising event to be held on Saturday, February 20th, 2010, from 7 p.m. until 9 p.m. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Yeah, thank you. Good luck with it. Good luck. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, item four, walkway. The Harbor Methodist Church. Reverend, how are you? I'm well. I'm well. Good to, uh, be with you. Good to have you here. My name is Rick McKinley, the pastor at the Harbor United Methodist Church. And what we're asking for is permission. There is a driveway that runs on the west side of our property parallel to the sidewalk at Jenkins. And we want to want, um, create a walkway perpendicular to connect the two properties. Um, for the past several years, we've had the pleasure of having staff at Jenkins Park in our lot. And on Sunday, we use that lot for the overflow for our worship. And so it would be very helpful in the summer, I mean in the winter, to have a place where we can plow and clear. So A walkway just to make it easier for the... Yeah, there's about 20 feet of lawn yep. between the sidewalk that belongs to Jenkins and the driveway that belongs to us. And in the winter, it just becomes a mess, yeah, as people try to walk back and forth. So um, we want to pave that. We're going to pay for it. We're just looking for permission to put down pavement on town property. I checked before the board comments. I checked with uh, the planning board. Um, just one thought, would you tell Tony that the meeting started at 6.30, just, I just thought of it, he's at Capital Planning. Um, the Planning Board had no problem with it at all, so having said that, comments from the board? Um, this obviously sounds great, I went and looked at it myself, and you know, it looks, looks great, and obviously I'm going to vote in favor of this. I have a question, given the discussions about Snow removal and so on. Yes. Who will be responsible for snow removal in the wintertime? And we figured we'll just continue that since we already Thank clear you. our walkway and driveway and all of that. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, we have a building use seven days a week. So yep. it just makes sense for us to just continue that. That's that's our plan. No, uh, uh, Reverend, it's a great opportunity. It's a great partnership. I yeah. fully support been. it and that I appreciate been. it. You're yeah. Right. You bet. Motion. Do we need one? Well. Uh, I guess for the sake of <clears throat> we need a motion, Kim, let's move that the board uh, agrees with the concept of the construction of uh, of a sidewalk on town property, um, in particular the property located at Jenkins um, Elementary School. Second. Discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank Thanks, you. gentlemen. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. Kim, I abstain from that. Uh, the next event is a, a, a ride yes. for all timers. Uh, Denise, is it? Yes. My name is uh, Denise Arondo, and I'm the director of the McCourt Foundation. And we are based in Quincy, Massachusetts, and have been doing fundraising for Alzheimer's and MS research for 18 years. And we're partnered with Brigham and Women's Hospital. And uh, just to give you a little piece of history, uh, for the past 18 years, we've run a road race down in Harwichport, which is where the McCourt family had summered, and have decided to bring, to change the event and bring it uh, closer to our constituents. So we are doing a 25-mile bike ride that's going to start and end at Wapatuck State Park, and it will travel through the towns of Hingham, Cohasset, Situate, and Norwell. And we have been working with all of the other towns, and actually you're our last town to get approval. Um, we have been working with the Situate Police Department to map out our route, which is attached in um, a letter that I had sent to Patricia Vincenzi, along with your new form that you now have for approving events. So I think that 
the information that you need in terms of uh, what is going to what's going to entail and the route it's all attached it has been approved by the police and we are looking um, tonight to get your approval to host the event I noticed that uh, the town administrator no problem except to make sure you get a food permit temporary food per that we can yeah. do that we don't know how much food yep. we're going yep. to need or, or even if there will be food it's a little preliminary but um, I would anticipate we would have something, and I would expect that I would have to get a food Whatever. permit to do that. Board, John. We just got something tonight from uh, Chief Stewart. Did you see it, Joe? I don't think I have. Just in his concern is, and it was mine as well, that they would tell the applicant how many police officers and so forth that they need. They did the situate police. I've been working with Lieutenant. Um, Coyle yes. and Sergeant Kilmartin. And if you look at the attached, they have actually told us we need, I think it's 12 police details right now. Um, there's a route that's attached at the very end okay. to the document. This is one that is on that event form that you now ask people to fill out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The very last page, and if you, I can supply this to you if you'd like, if you don't have a copy, I can give it to you right now. Um, we basically have, I'll tell you, I'll just do a quick count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven police details, which, you know, our safety is going to be a top priority for us. And, you don't have uh, a problem with that. It just, it that's just That's eleven in situ? Oh, yes, in situ alone. What's the route, anyways? We don't, I don't I have don't, it. Yeah, that's yeah, mind if I give you this? Um, Absolutely. Yeah, we don't have that route. Oh, this is it right here. where it starts out, and then your town starts here. Left on to Gannett. Left on Gannett. Want to read that aloud, John? Sure. Um, once they come into uh, Situate, they're going to take a left on to Gannett Road, and they're coming off <coughs> Border Street. So if you're coming down Border Street, actually, or on Border Street, then out left on to Gannett, and then right on to Hadley. So then they're going to come down uh, Hadley Road to the end where the Jericho boat ramp is next to uh, Pier 44. And then it looks like they're going to stop there. And then you take, you have a right on. We go back, back up. I guess yes. you're going to go back up Hadley, take a right on to Turner, and then uh, actually a left on to Turner is what it's going to be. And then you're going to go down to Tilden Road, take a left on to Tilden, stay on Tilden until you come somewhere around Stockbridge. So it looks as though that you're going to go near Litchfield, carry a Litchfield or something. Uh, to Stockbridge, then it says becomes Greenfield. So then you're going to take a, looks like a left onto Greenfield Terrace, down to the driftway, take a right onto driftway, <laughs> then onto Old Driftway, then onto Stockbridge, and then you're going to come across to Countryway, and then you're going to go up Countryway and take a left onto First Parish, cross 3A, and then a right onto Grove Street. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yep. 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 Left on the clap, cross summer, and stay on the clap. That was like map. A couple, couple, couple of turns you might want to uh, revisit before you send the bikes out. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we, we we drove the route with um, Lieutenant Coyle, and we wanted to avoid going through Situate Harbor. So that's we want to try and make it appealing for everyone and um, we will make sure in addition to the police we also will have volunteers that will be volunteer in whatever capacity we think we need them okay I mean I'm not going to put a, a, you know, a non-uniformed person out in the middle of the road somewhere Rick, um, you have, uh, when, whatever Rick, else is yep. done yeah uh, there's a comment here about Jericho boat ramp and um, which is a state facility as well as a town facility yes, okay. okay I just want to let you know October 2nd is a Saturday yes and the boating season ends October 15th okay. and that ramp is likely to be heavily heavily used that day they are going to be <clears throat> anywhere of maybe a hundred different boats and boat trailers trying to use that parking lot on that exact day okay and if the weather is good it might even exceed exceed a hundred um, because that's likely the last weekend of the year Mm -hmm. um, or very near the end so they're going to be day boaters going in for the day and leaving their trailers there and then coming out in the afternoon okay. and there are also going to be seasonal boaters hauling their boats out and there's going to be a crane there probably by some of the people that pull masts out of sailboats 
There's the, so there'll be a, most likely a crane permanently there all day and uh, tractor trailers hauling boats up to 50 feet long out of that spot. So um, there's a little note here in addition to you guys or you folks um, coordinating with Mass Fish and Game who oversee that. You also just might want to really consider this in your own planning okay. of that and either you know, yeah, I, I take, take that into account. I mean, that's like a really wrote, tough, well, we tough spot. Well, we anticipate being through that. Of just, just thinking from a timing perspective, we start at 8.30 in the morning. Yep. All right. Yep. So that's about halfway yeah, in mean, our route. So I would say, you know, and, and to be honest with you, if it's something we need to look at, we will. Um, by 9.30, 10 o'clock, I okay. would say that the majority of our right. riders are I, I hate to say that. I, I think yeah. you should. That, you're going to have to, if, if the whole, if the route, what I read, and, and I may be off, but I mean, I would think you, you're going to, you should. If, if all you're going to do is go down Haverly Road, which is, goes right down basically the center of town, okay. end at the bottom, which is where the pier is or where um, the, the boat ramp is, to turn around and go right back up the road to take another left or a right, it's supposed to be a left, onto Turner, it doesn't make sense why you're going all the way down to the bottom of Haverly Road only to go right back up again. I, I don't know how traffic's going to go. You're going to have to shut both, both ways off on Haverly Road for that period. The reason why I say that, if that's the case, then I think um, trying to stop at the boat ramp is superfluous. You're just going to clog up traffic downtown, and there, you, it should be pushed off. If that's, and I, I know the directions are maybe they're not the clearest, so, I, so maybe there's some, some errors in just the directions, but it just sounds like you're just going straight down. You're going to go right back up Haverly until you get to Turner and then go off. It, it, it's going to be a mess, especially the boaters on that day. Sean? Well, <coughs> I, I couldn't agree more with Rick. You have commercial boat haulers, and they're going to start at 6 o'clock in the morning. People like Rick and other people make appointments a month ahead of time to have his boat taken out on that day. Okay. So I just, you know, support the idea. Just, you know, like John was saying, rework your route a little Absolutely. bit. The, ch the fire chief sitting behind you, I'd love to hear what he's got to say. I know he wrote a quick comment or two, but sometimes these things change a little bit as time goes on and they grow. And Supportive you know. of it. I don't want you right, to right, 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 right. Totally that. supportive. I just right. want to make sure there's not a, you know, we're just exactly. trying to help you out here. For tonight, and for the sake of me moving forward in yep. planning, if we could say in concept that it's approved and that we go back and I work with whomever, the police department, you know, they're the ones that I've been working with uh, to come up with this. And we come up with a, a more, a better appropriate spot. We need to have a water spot, and it just so happens that you're halfway through our route, so we right. need a spot that's in situate. And to be honest, I, I think I had looked at some other routes that you've had previously, and since we weren't going through situate harbor, I was trying to, you know, give people a little bit of a peek of situate harbor right. without going through downtown. Yeah, and I'm and I'm fine with that. And don't necessarily, personally, don't personally, personally, I'm fine rule with that. that out. I mean, okay. Yeah, and I think that maybe where you're you're and overthinking situate harbor. I mean, it's it's uh, yeah. we don't want it tied up for a day, but we don't necessarily uh, possibly mind bikes going through. I don't have to pick up the number and a lot of things. Uh, well, you know, believe, we're, we're hoping to get maybe 300 bikers. Yeah. We don't really know. I mean, so it's, we, we, since it's what, our first year What doing I think it, we should do is follow up on what you just said. I think yeah. we should probably vote this tonight if the board feels that way. Right. And ask you if you wouldn't mind to come back sometime early summer, three or four months prior to the event. Okay. Just to represent the route. Itself. Represent it. Route. Just okay. make sure that we're out on the same page. You also have a part Egypt Beach parking lot there that's pretty big yeah, that probably thing. won't be used you know, 12, that yeah. late in the year. It, that it, could be. And where is that? It's halfway, halfway down Hatherley. Halfway down Hatherley. Okay. Yeah, that so may be if, good. I'm not as familiar with the area. Yeah. You know, no considering worries. Considering I drove right past this place tonight. Keep, keep that in mind. That's a good spot. So did we. Okay. And <laughs> so did you. <laughs> that's not too good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So I can. The parking lot, does it have a name? Egypt, Egypt Beach. 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 Egypt Beach. Okay. All right. I'd be happy to. Thank you. That would be great. Yeah. A motion if no one has any other. Chief wanted. Rick? Thank you, sir. Can we start doing it on a Sunday? I know we ran the. Um, the Dr. Nico bike race. We've done it on a Saturday. And in the fall, it's a very busy day for the kids at the soccer fields. And the traffic was backed up. You know, I mean, on Sunday, you have a lot less traffic flow going through town. 
Well, for people that might come here from out of town, that you know, to meet family members, because this is a big family event for people. So um, I guess in Los we try to start fairly early in the morning. Mm -hmm. It is only a 25 mile right by right, where most people can ride 25 miles and up. Two, two and a half hours. But well, we're dealing with all people. <laughs> well, we're not necessarily going to be promoting this to kids. Okay. okay. This is really more of an adult event. Um, you know, and, and since it's our first of time we're doing it, it could be that we come back next year and we say some of these other things have, have changed. And the, and the other thing that's different from Nico's thing, I believe, is there aren't going to be cars here. This isn't the origin, right. the origin <laughs> point. These are bicycles no, no, coming no in it's and not coming a race out. Either. Right. It's not this a is timed event. this is bicycles coming in and bicycles <laughs> coming out. Whereas with the other one, they were using Cole Parkway as the staging area, the beginning, the origin, and the end, and all that. Well, actually, they, most of them were down the uh, the T station. Mm -hmm. bus them in. Mm -hmm. There's still plenty of parking in Cole yeah. Parkway. Okay. I imagine it would be a problem now that she's gotten permission from four or five other towns to go back and, and change. And you know, it, it is a somewhat of a. It would be somewhat of a process, and I guess what I'd like to say is that I'd like to try and stick to yep. Saturday. And if we go through this and we come back again next year, and we, we realize we may realize <coughs> a number of different things as we go through the process, but right now I'd like to try and keep it on Saturday. Yep. Yes. And I just raised the I just raised the Jericho thing just to help you out. No, that's great. That's, no, that's I think that's excellent. Because major boat hauling weekend. Absolutely. At that. And I'll look into the. And believe it or not, check the tides, because uh, the boats come out. A lot of the main haulers are there at high tide, and if you've okay. got, um, <clears throat> if you happen to have low tide in the morning, that may help. It won't. It won't make it go away. Mm -hmm. It will minimize. But if you've got high tide at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. or 11, anywhere from 9 to 12. It's going to be a real problem. Motion? Yeah. Do you want to, are we going to make a motion? Yeah. Just Tonight, I would suggest so she could put that part of her. Yes, and he, but that. I'd like to maybe we'll walk away with the approval pending a, a change in that board back of review of the yeah. Yeah. To move, the, to move the board of selectmen vote to support the McCourt Foundation special events permit application for a bicycle fundraising event scheduled for October 2nd, 2010. And in accordance with all conditions set forth by the town administrator, Department of Public Works, Fire Department, Police Department, Board of Health, and the Buildings Inspections Department, and pending a uh, final review of the um, route by Police Department. July 1st. I will guess by July 1st, 2010. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion from the board. Any further discussion? From the audience? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Right. Have a good night. You too. Uh, <coughs> I guess we are at the Budget review. We have one, one moment. The first budget is conservation. I don't see maybe someone could get veterans. Veterans. Veterans first. Gary's here. I have an old one. Yeah, that's true. Okay. That was a problem. <coughs> Here we go. Gary, you went from the bottom to the top. <laughs> Very quickly. Okay, thank you. So it's five, this is second, 543. 543 Start in order. Here it is. Yeah, it's, it's numeric order, so go 500s. 500. Yeah, and then it's in the middle back of it. Gary, yeah, well, ten. Well, well, we're all getting it together oh, here. Okay. We're asking everyone to uh, that comes in to read the mission statement that you put down, just to give everyone a good idea, of, a better idea, I guess, of, of what you do and, and, and what your 
your, your mission is. I think it's on. Do you have that on the sheet? Maybe you don't. Yep. Trisha does. Thank you. If you would just read that mission statement. Okay, uh, fine. Uh, the Veterans Services Department provides financial and medical assistance to needy veterans and their families. We respect and concern for the individuals involved. The department assists veterans and their survivors in obtaining benefits in accordance with state and federal regulations. Thank you. Uh, this, this is a, an, an office that is sometimes goes unnoticed unless you unless unless you're in need of assistance. I think uh, then it becomes very very important to people. Uh, we budget it every year, as we all know, and we receive, I think, is it 75% reimbursement uh, from the state? Yes, 75% reimbursement. The town pays 25 and the state pays the 75%. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, comments or questions from the board or any thoughts? I say, as I say, we, 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 uh, we are so aware of the veterans, you know, what you guys do, what you do to help veterans. It's, it's, Inspiring, to say the least. Uh, I think a lot of people don't realize, as I say, unless they needed it, how important you are. But uh, thank you for everything you do for everyone in town. We truly appreciate it. Rick? I have a question about the reimbursement. It's not particular to your particular budget or something, but is this, because it's got a 75% reimbursement rate, is this something that the state is likely to be cutting back on that percentage or anything? I know we don't have to deal with that now, but I'm just... I would hope I would not. imagine I, it's one of the last hope. things they would yeah, touch. But I'm just wondering what the past has been with these sorts of things. Uh, no, the state, I don't believe they will be any, any curtailments uh, along those lines. Yeah. In fact, I think they will probably be trying to expand the benefits. Yeah. Uh, as I get any communiques, I can pass them along to the town administrator. Uh, yeah. So she should be up to date. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, Thanks. Probably in 03, 04, especially. Usually a year behind. So you're usually a year behind there. Oh, I and see. And now it might go to 18 months. So that's just something we'll keep an eye on. But Gary's correct that that 75 percent isn't going to change. Where does that money go? Into the general fund under local receipts? <clears throat> and I just obviously the the support number went up the full amount of the budget increase. Um, and it obviously it varies. Two years ago it was twenty eight thousand and this year it's tracking closer to twelve. And, and that'll probably continue as long as we continue to be engaged in the conflicts. And like Gary said, the benefits can be expanded. And right. so it just continue, it will continue that way. But this number that we have in here is not the discounted number. No. This is the full 100%. expenditure. So, so our expenditure is 25% of this. Right. Yeah. Right. But, but we're also taking all the other money on the revenue side of it. So it's. Yeah. Yeah. From the board, further discussion? So basically, if, if the FY year expense for 09 was 28000 and they're a year behind, even though it's going to be listed at, uh, for this coming year at sixteen, then we're going to be ahead of the game by the time the money gets paid. Yes. If and when. Gary, you're making us money. I like this. Yeah. <laughs> How about a raise? Hey, right. <laughs> Stop there. And yeah, we have top people working on that, Gary. <laughs> Never viewed as an income producing department, but yes. maybe, maybe it is. <laughs> Gary, thank you. It's, thank it's, you. it's like working in private industry. Huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, before we go to conservation, uh, Paul. Donlan from the school department came over. I, we have dealt with the matter of the. Oh, okay. Uh, do you have any concerns we could pass nope. on to the Reverend? No, I just I thought it was seven o'clock. I'm sorry. It's, it's I no was problem. Watching the girls' game. That's more. <laughs> uh, 
It was the side of the, you know, the walkway would be built between the parking lot and, and the church. Right, the first they, parking lot, right. Yeah, yeah, they would maintain it, and it's really for the convenience of both the school department personnel who on occasion park over there. That's right. And vice versa, the church uh, yep. goers who sometimes park in that. Seemed like a win-win for everybody. It certainly so does. We right. uh, thank you for coming, but <laughs> all right. Sorry, I'm late. Thank you. Thank you. Go back Happy to the, New Year. Go back to the game. Uh, next, the fire budget, a conservation budget. Mr. Klish, this is going to be a little late. If okay. You can go to, um, the fire Why don't we go to the fire? Fire budget. Rick Hawaii. Good. Thank you for coming on. Again, you might have heard, you know, if you would read the mission statement, uh, I know it's, on, it's only a couple of lines for a lot of work you guys do, but you would. The Situate Fire Department is committed to providing the citizens and visitors of Situate an effective, well-trained team of professionals to protect their lives and property through fire protection and education, emergency medical and rescue services, fire suppression, and emergency management. Thank you. Um, I think I'll open it to the board, but just comment that <coughs> I don't think anybody can question the, the, the need or the effectiveness of the fire department, especially in the area of emergency uh, health responding, I guess, where there was, we're probably as far from a hospital as any other town in the Commonwealth. Uh, we're probably 20 minutes, 25 minutes from South Shore, uh, so the importance of, of of our emergency system is can't be overstated. But having said that, I'll open it to the board. I have one question, uh, just a comment, I guess, while we're getting up to date here. Uh, one of the accomplishments, and I, I take this as a real accomplishment, because the temptation at the end of the fiscal year is to probably try to find ways to spend as much money as you possibly can uh, because you know if you don't it goes back to the general fund of the fire department last year uh, we turned over 170 130 thousand dollars to the general fund and I think that's a, a credit to the fire department and, and their thinking of, 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 the, of the town in general not Actually, just Mr. Uh, Agnew held a gun to my head anyway, did he really so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're glad he did I guess of that but but it's important it's uh, in these fiscal times every nickel that we can get back at the end of the year is just makes it that much easier for the the next year comments from the board we're, we're just talking across the street at the um, about the ambulance service that we have and um, the chief brought up some interesting points which won't be resolved tonight, but that that has been uh, a little bit of a profit center for us and maybe should be looked in a little bit more closer in terms of the availability of having another, another ambulance on call to, to help times when we have to call another town for backup services and when other towns need to call us. Yeah. Um, so it seems like the revenue in that area has been increasing over the last three years. I know we bought the software system to, to help increase or, or make the billing system more effective. And, um, you know, it seems like something that maybe should be considered. Right. Well, the unfortunate part of that is we, um, there's been like a $120,000 cut, which I was using for overtime, which is the two unpaid salaries mm -hmm. yep. that, right. that, that are going to get cut out this year. And um, I was using that for the overtime budget. This year we're, we're a little um, higher on the, the overtime budget. We had a couple of guys out in disability and one an extended sick leave. And you know, it's unexpected. That's why last year we didn't have that. That's why we had the, the money to return to the town. But like this year, it, it's I'm going to need the money for the two extra salaries. So next year, uh, I don't know if I'll be able to run that second ambulance again because I, I'm not going to have the overtime because I, I take the money out of my overtime budget and the revenue goes to the general fund. So I, you know, you know, for the good of the town. But then I get Trish going, "What are you doing with all your overtime?" And <laughs> right. you know, I have to answer to her. So, what about oh, I was going to say, what, Tony, uh, okay. John and Tony. Uh, so, uh, what about the possibility? And I, I'm, I'm saying, like, not the ambulance, but contracting out for a second ambulance with private sector. I know that there's some entities that 
have ambulance services? In, in other words, would yeah, that be? This, the ambulance is a money-making machine, actually. Uh, that I understand, but I'm saying for the short term, as opposed to a long-term project, which would be get up a second ambulance. Well, which you, you're not going to make any money from a second ambulance. You're better off just having a surrounding community, as we do now, come in and, okay. and, and take it over. I was only but, saying for the service in the event that we, my assumption was that we we're doing it because there's a need for a second for the health and safety if, if we needed somebody to respond quicker. Right. And it may be because of the cost of the, the well, initial capital right. investment might take a little longer to figure that out. But unfortunately, the way the, uh, private ambulances works, you know, you get like a between 45 minutes and an hour and a half ETA. Why don't you okay. call them? I mean, they're not good at emergency unless you contract them with the town and have them in your station. Okay. In you know, in it's it's physic fiscally it's it's crazy because because you know you can keep all this all this revenue okay. as opposed to sending it out of town. Marshfield just did the opposite. Right, right. right. Marshfield had a private and the ambulance and uh, in house. You know, once they right. they switched over. Can I can I ask a question before talk, along that line? <clears throat> well, don't we have any ambulance that we share? Right, we have the three times. No, it's, oh. it's not the ambulance itself; it's the staffing. All right. You know, we, we staff one ambulance. Right. Or if well, we have two shifts with twelve guys. Right. If everyone's in, and we have twelve guys. We right. run two that day. Right. But if there's, we do this. Um, if there's, we have one extra guy. Mm -hmm. Our ambulance goes out of town. It's going to be gone for two hours. Right. So we hire, we do a call back, and we hire a guy three hours, and we put the, um, you know, the other ambulance into service while we do that. But the only time we do it is when we have that extra guy. I was thinking of a way, we, if you could do it more often, you know, certain cases, especially if other, the surrounding towns, the ambulance, if they're all at South Shore Hospital, that's when I would hire, you know, I'd hire two guys to do it because the other towns would be calling us looking for an ambulance. So I, I, I went through the numbers for the year, and just the, the little I did when we had that one extra guy, it cost us like $20,000, and uh, we probably have about $70,000 in revenue that came in for that. So. Is that because he's a P or an I, or it doesn't matter? No, at no, all? no. It's it's we we uh, we lost the waiver this year. We so we have to run two paramedics all the time now, and, and we have enough staff, so we we really don't need need the waiver anyway. Right. That was good when we were just starting up, but we only had a handful. But we have like 22 medics now. Right. Okay. So we can uh, we can staff an ALS ambulance. Was well, Coney or Rick some of them down here? Yeah, oh, I got a hook. Um, quick question while you're on the ambulance. When we call Norwell to cover an emergency for us because our ambulance is at South Shore Hospital, do we pay? I know Norwell gets the billing for the actual work, right. but do we pay Norwell no. a fee? So it's no, really it, just. It's a mutual aid right. thing. Okay. We do. Yeah. Um, well, on that note, we had. Um, where did it go? We had uh, 244 calls that other towns came in and took, in, you know, wow. took a situated person to the hospital. So it's really the missed opportunity of right. providing it's the right, service right. It, it, for it's there. I mean, we could we could probably work out some sort of system, but like I said, with you know, with the overtime, and if we ever have the the, um, the manpower shortage that we had this year with the people being out, I, I'd be hard pressed to be able to do that. You know, and, and it is kind of crazy not to do it because it, it does bring revenue into, into the town. Well, one just observation and one one question. Um, <coughs> read the paper about what our surrounding communities are doing about about their fire and you see firehouses closing and all this sort of stuff mm -hmm. so I think we're fortunate in the town this year particularly not to have to go to that extreme to do you know the, our fire services are going to be at a pretty uh, similar level of service that they have historically mm -hmm. and I've noticed in Walpole and other towns in the paper that that really they are getting cut back so mm -hmm. You know, kudos to you and Trish for not having to go to that extreme this year. Um, my question is, in terms of the uh, the benchmarking information that we have here, there's a huge discrepancy between the budgets of half of these towns and the other half. Some of the budgets around two million dollars, and I'm sure it's a a simple answer that I don't know the answer to. But how does a town like Abington and Duxbury and all those that have a two million dollar budget? And towns like Hingham and Marshfield and us and Milton have a four million dollar budget. Is there is it an apples to apples comparison, or do they run their operations differently? It's a lot of well, the the towns that are half the budget, they they have a call department also. That's how they do it. 
Taylor, I'm sorry. A call department. Which is? Volunteer. Oh, okay. Well, basically. And, uh, so, so that's what these are. Like, no, well, the Cohass, I mean, they're just getting to getting rid of their call department because, you know, in this time, and, uh, it, it doesn't really work anymore because people don't work in town anymore. People don't want to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning when it's 4 degrees out anymore. So, uh, you know. You, so it's more of a volunteer yeah, base volunteer, that these other yeah, towns right. have? Well, not volunteer. It's a call. I mean, they, they get paid for, you know, when they do come in to work right. if there is a fire. Yeah, because obviously, as Rick pointed out to me, the number of personnel is just dramatically different. Right. Well, that's why I didn't compare myself with them because they're, right. they're, they're called departments. Right. But the size of the towns and the, right. the mileage and all these other mm -hmm. things are very similar. Interesting. Yeah, but, you know, you tell them, talking about towns that were, you know, that were cutting, closing stations. We've done that. We, we've already closed mine, at, and we're down 12 positions from, like, 20 years ago. Joe, yeah. Yeah. Joe was around then. He was, really. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, we did our cutting years ago. Right. So I mean, I my point to, is, but, you know, from the last couple of years to the upcoming year, mm -hmm. um, the citizens will, will not see a dramatic change in terms of the services that we're yeah. providing them. Well, I don't know, because, like, we're... In my opinion, we're about as low as we can go to, to run, the, the, to provide the service that we do now. I mean, we, we provide a very good service. I, I must admit, not pat myself on the back or anything, but I've seen other towns and how they operate. We have very, very dedicated people, in, uh, mm -hmm. and they're very good at what they do. Absolutely. Yeah. That's true. Definitely. But it is the second largest department budget other than the school. In right. the town, so oh, it yes. is. That's correct. You know, it is a big, big. No, but it's, it's, a, yeah. it's, it's a big service. I'm not. It's, it's not a big a, service. You know, it's you know it's where we provide BALS. I mean, that's expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, train. Uh, there's a lot of training involved, and there's overtime involved in that. You know, there's it's just there's a lot of money involved in the ALS mm -hmm. portion. But and that's understandable, considering we're one of the farthest communities right. Right. to get to a, a hospital. Well, plus, quickly. we're when you're surrounded, when you're boarded by an ocean. There's no mutual aid coming from there either. Yeah. So, I mean, right. you're kind of you know, yep. in trouble. Plus, we have Hummer Rock, too, which, which is, I you know, know the town has that scenario. That's another so state. There's that. eight positions there that right. normally we wouldn't, and they really don't count towards, they might as well be two towns away. Right. You know, it's like, they're, they're like Hull, yeah. basically. Yeah. You know, yeah. by the time it takes them to get here, Hull could be here. Right. You said Hull with an U, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Rick, did you have a comment? Then, yeah. Um, we'll this is just right. for my own really sort of education. Um, but is it common, I mean, do all towns have the ambulance services uh, administratively within the fire department? Uh, in Plymouth County, yes. Okay. Yes. It's um, in the few that don't are trying to get it. Trying to merge it. The only yeah. ones around Plymouth doesn't have it and Weymouth doesn't okay. have it. But other than that, just about every other municipality. Because on the one hand, I'm, I'm sure there's efficiencies by having them together, and I know you guys are, certainly are taking advantage of that. But I do, you know, wonder. I mean, a lot of the times, the calls are purely for ambulance work, and we see the fire trucks go by as well, and and all this. And I'm I'm wondering if there's ways for, for savings in that if we don't need to send the trucks every single time and all that sort of stuff. But well, it's a, it's a safety issue also. I mean, you want at least four people there at a medical call? Yep. Is, you know, right. it, it takes no. four people to carry someone down the stairs yeah, no, on, understood. A, on a back porch, you know, understood. without killing yourselves. Right. Yeah. All right. So, I, you know, that's why when people say, oh, what do you need that? There was a car and a truck and an ambulance. Right. And four people get up. Right. <laughs> it's just getting the bodies there. Yeah. And, you, you know, if you leave the truck at the station, then you get another call. You know, that's why we bring the trucks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sean? I was just going to, it was more of a comment, kind of goes along with what Rick just said. I mean, <clears throat> this whole department has changed in the last 25 years. Yeah. I have a, an employee that's worked for me who was a fireman, and that's all he was before he retired. And now if we, you know, you call, have the need to call for, a, you know, anything for an emergency or anything, you have an all paramedics come. You know? <coughs> which is a great thing. I mean, technology's changed, <coughs> mm -hmm. so you don't have the fires, and, and that's a great thing. But you know, now you yeah. have, like you said, I bet you it's probably 90% of your calls are medical, yeah, something like that. That's 75%. All right, yeah. you know, and you're you know, getting a lot for your, a buck, you know, right. a lot of bang for your buck, that's, that's all. 
John, anything? Uh, I, again, you know, it's, it's, it's easy for us to <coughs> criticize. I know there are certainly things that we keep asking to kind of cut and cut and cut because it is the third largest budget that we look at, obviously. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if the call's made and you're the recipient of that call, then you're going to want people there because you got a good 20-minute uh, to 30-minute ride to get to the hospital. So I, I just, you know, I guess it depends on the situation we're looking at. I, you do a great job. I think the board realizes that. We're not criticizing that. And I know you don't know that, Chief, but in case I think anybody in the department feels that way, absolutely. We're just trying to deal with the crisis or the budget situation and try to do the best we can. But we, we totally appreciate it. Thank you, Rick. So should I just add, yeah. um, first, um, I really want to thank Chief Judge for his cooperation on the budget process. This is the budget I probably cut the most. And we talked about what my rationale was. Um, but one of the things I did represent to the Chief is that if our financial position should improve or we get less than we're projecting for a local aid cut or whatever, that my strongest and first recommendation will be to put it back into the fire department. Mm -hmm. Um, it was very difficult to sweep those two unfunded but funded but unfilled positions. Um, I think everybody understands the rationale behind that versus a live body. He is going to have a challenge with the overtime. I understand that. I level funded it from this year, but that was already cut from FY09. But I just want the minutes and the board to know that that's my first choice for um, putting back any extra we might have if our budget shapes up better. And I just want to be on record for that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks, Rick. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Brian, the police budget. And again, Brian, thank you for coming in. I, you've had a busy night. We've seen you in three different meetings tonight. Uh, if you would, Brian, just read the mission statement, budget, uh, fire department budget. <coughs> Sure. The uh, mission of the Situate Police Department is to carry out patrol, investigative, enforcement, support, and educational functions in order to promote the safety and general welfare of citizens of the town of Situate. Thank you. And again, I think I'll start, just start it off by saying, you know, like, as we are with so many departments in town, we are extremely fortunate to have the, the police department we have in, in uh, all one has to do sometimes is read some of the problems in surrounding towns to really appreciate exactly how, how well you guys do the job. And, and I can assure you that this board knows it, recognizes it, and appreciates it. And I think every, not just, I think every citizen of the town recognizes it. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, comments from the board? Anybody? Sean, start off? Not right the second. I'm sure I yep. will in a minute, Joe. It's. Uh, you know, we, and we get, I guess this also is for, not only for you, but for, for all the partners. We also recognize that this has been a, a very uh, new concept, uh, this whole budget process. I, th I know we feel, and I, I kind of think the department has feel now, too, after it's done, maybe not so much when they were doing it, but after it's done, that it's, it's, it's good. It's gonna, everyone's going to benefit from it. Uh, you know, and next year won't be as difficult administratively to do it. But, you know, I think we all have a better, I think I know, I speak for myself, that I have a much better handle on, you know, the overall picture of your goals, objectives, accomplishments that I would have if this wasn't done. So, uh, thank you. Comments from the board? Rick Murray. Uh, just looking at the goals and objectives, um, and not getting into that all too much here, but one of the key ones that I've been familiar with, I've been involved with, is this address enforcement, environmental and safety concerns of the new inlet area. And uh, the only reason I bring that up now is, is uh, do you see or envision um, this requiring, uh, you know, new budgetary needs and communication devices? And, and then I wanted to segue that into sort of a, a specific question about how it's going in terms of coordination with Harbor Master and Fire and State DEP and, and all that sort of stuff. I think what I would anticipate. I could see that just being a real mess and causing a lot of um, a lot of financial impact on you guys. I don't think to be a tremendous financial impact. Uh, you know, hopefully, uh, if we can get into this early on, things are, things are going to yeah. get better, and the need isn't going to be so much. Uh, later in the summer. 
Um, I, I wouldn't anticipate any problem working with any of the groups that I, I, uh, I mentioned there. Um, you know, I've already, uh, you know, we get along fine with all the uh, the uh, town agencies. Sure. In, uh, uh, I've already talked to the, the Coast Guard uh, in the past about this, or so in the environmental police too. So, uh, and we deal with, you know, we've uh, we've been involved with the Audubon people. Uh, regarded this for years, so I don't anticipate any, uh, you know, what I'd like to do is probably get something going really soon with it to try to uh, reach out to everybody and, and uh, come up with a plan of something yeah. that's uh, going to work and get yeah. the job done out there. Because I know it's a real headache for you folks and you and it's so distant located well, it, it, that's, and that's you do thing. a really good job with it, but if there's uh, anything we can do to help on that What we envision is a, uh, Probably some type of a uh, establishing some sort of a, uh, a, a would it be a command post or whatever you want to call it out mm -hmm. there? We'd actually establish a presence out there for periods of time mm -hmm. during the weekends. Um, you know what I'd like to do is, is look around and see if we might not be able to find some uh, some grant money somewhere to help us fund it. Uh, it's something I'd really want to do with with the. Uh, full-time police officers with the help of the, you know, the part-timers, but, uh, you know, I'd, I'd rather have the more experienced people out there, uh, at least to begin with. And, uh, you know, uh, hopefully we get control of things a little bit out there and, and, and things, will be, uh, things will get better. And, yeah. Uh, we can, uh, you know, it, it, and then it, 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 you know, it isn't going to be as expensive to, uh, the cost isn't going to be there probably. Uh, Later on, as much as it would be initially, sure. you know. So, uh, yeah, we've uh, the lieutenant and I we've talked about some things that we'd like to do out there. And we're going to get try try to get some of these uh, uh, the other agencies involved in it, and I'm sure we'll have no problem doing that. You know, so. Okay, great. Thanks, Tony. I'm sure. Uh, a couple a couple questions. Um, as we've spoken over the last six months about the. Um, underage drinking issues mm -hmm. and stuff like that and we've talked about doing more testing on that is any of that incorporated in the budget here I know it wasn't a huge expense but do you foresee it being not really uh, you know it's it's something we could you know we could easily I think uh, uh, you know, it could easily be uh, done within with the existing uh, we did get a grant last year to do some of it in, the, in uh, it about forty nine hundred dollars I keep looking, but so far then they're, they're not offering the grant. But that doesn't mean it isn't going to happen. But it, it's uh, you know it's something we can do, with, uh, and we plan to. Uh, another question, and this may be more for Trish, on the the capital portion of the budget. There's about a hundred thousand dollars in there with replacement of cruisers, which I know we do every year. There's three cruisers that we. Is that is that going through the capital plan? I mean, I know those items no. are over twenty-five thousand. They don't meet the criteria. Um, oh, because of the in, life. Perhaps okay. the uh, the expense, but not the uh, life expectancy. Okay. Uh, um, right. So that's a three-year cycle where we replace three vehicles. Uh, two and a half to three years. Uh, <coughs> they're ready to go. Great. And I had one other question, but. We can get back if you Yeah, come back. Come on. Brian, how's the dog working out? Great. Is it, uh, is it it's a huge commitment on, on behalf of Brian, isn't it? It is. In, uh, you know, I can honestly say it's one of the best things we, we ever did. Uh, as you know, there was, um, you know, there was, uh, there was some, uh, there was some downtime. Brian had some issues this. And the summer. dog has to stay. It's not like another office. The, the officer dog was home stuff. all the time. He right. went. Uh, he actually stayed down the Cape for a couple of weeks, and uh, he's back. And uh, well rested. Uh, things are, things are going better than ever. Uh, believe me. He he he. They were, we were he required uh, a little bit of uh, kind of retraining, uh, but uh, he's back. Uh, believe me, better uh, as good as ever. Uh, both Brian and the uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and then and Brian and he can get called <coughs> out of town maybe they and, and they and you reciprocate they correct? do on occasion and, and you know I know people say well you know what are we getting in return well uh, you know I think we get a lot in return really yeah. uh, you know we've gotten help uh, 
from uh, from Cohasset as far as our uh, night before the 4th of July. They provided us officers. They provided us vehicles. Uh, as far as Marshfield, he goes down there now and then. Uh, they've assisted us in all kinds of oh, investigations. And perfect. So it, right. it's, there's definitely a, a reciprocal, uh, you know, we definitely get a lot in return. Right. Right. Great. John? Yeah, um, just Chief, I just uh, looking at your benchmark, you know, it, it, just so that people understand, our town, for a number of um, police officers, there are 30 as compared to 10 other communities, we rank six. So based on the numbers, and, um, you know, I was just looking at this, I mean, you look at a town like Hanover, they have 28 officers with four, a population of about 14,000. Harwich, uh, 12,000 population, they have 32. Rockland, 17,000, which is less than us, uh, 33. Duxbury, who has 14,000, 30 officers. Hull has 11. I mean, you do an awful lot with, with the resources you have, and I think certainly the statistics bear that out. And um, so people understand that, you know, you, you're, you're putting a lot of officers you know, you know I'm, I'm sure that some of those towns have things, you know, have situations or issues that we don't have, uh, you know, business areas, whatever. But we've got a lot of things that they don't have, too. You know, we're a coastal community. We've, we've got an inflated population in the summertime. Uh, we've got a, uh, a patrol sector that's, that's essentially six miles away from the rest of the town uh, that we have to cover uh, full time in the summertime and frequently. You know, during the winter, so no, you do. Uh, I, you do. I wasn't criticizing. No, you do I a lot because I, I mean, I look at Hingham and they've got 47 officers and they only have 21,000 people, so about 3,000 more, and they got 17 more officers. So it just kind of shows that you know, um, um, you know, well efficient, well run. That. That's Thank also you. why those two funded but unfilled positions are still in the budget. Yeah. Yeah. Tony? Yeah. That, well, that was part of, just to piggyback John's question, so in our current budget, the staffing level is the same as it was last year? Yeah, there are two, yes, there are two under, unfunded, uh, I'm sorry, there are two funded positions, they they vacant positions, I guess I have to say. But, uh, and just so everyone out there knows, um, the budget from last year to this year is flat. It's, you know, there's been no increase. I think it's a $9,000 increase on the $3 million budget, yeah, so it's really essentially is. flat. So. Thank, thank you. I, I know that one, just one thing before you leave, I think it's, it's so, and I know Detective Stewart and, and is so involved in uh, drug enforcement and drug prevention, and, and I, along with, I think, yourself, consider this probably one of the major issues in town. It's, it's and I keep using the word epidemic, and, and I know you do also, and I just, I only bring it up tonight so, so people will realize, maybe a few more people, will realize what a serious problem you guys have dealing with it. You can take everything in this budget, everything you're talking about, and it, it, it probably doesn't equal the drug problem, and not situate particularly. I don't, I don't want the papers to say, you know, situate, but in, in the world, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and we're no different. It's not a Boston problem, it's not a Brockton problem, it's a situate problem as well. So, and I know you guys, you know, are constantly on top of it. I applaud you and I, I encourage you, I guess, to keep it up because it's just it's too big an issue to let it just slide. Well, thank you. I thank you. That. Thanks, Brian. All right, thanks. Thank you. Chief. Thanks thank very you. much. Thank uh, you. Animal Control is also on there. I know Kim's dying to come up here. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> well <laughs> Animal control, uh, you know, we, 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 I don't think, do you? I'm, it should be under the police there. Uh, yeah, it yeah. is. So I just had it here a, a, a second. I think it goes without saying what you, what you guys do up there and for the town, but I just want you to come Where is it? ask you. Oh, it's it's in the police budget. Inside the police. Uh, I think some interesting statistics are in there that I, really the only reason I asked him <clears> to come up just to bring it to people's attention. And one of them was the number of volunteers, uh, situate volunteers, that are active in the shelter, 106 people, 106 volunteers, uh, situate residents, are very active in, in walking dogs and, 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 and all that goes with that shelter up there. And as you go along to, around to other towns in the South Shore and throughout the state, and you, you see what a facility we have up there. It's just. Uh, 
It's second to none. I, I can say that without without any doubt of being wrong. It's just it's unbelievable, and, and it's not only due to the staff, but to Kim, but to all the volunteers also. So I just the reason I asked to come up. I have no questions other than that. Well, I'd be remiss if I didn't say I could not do it without the chief and the department. They are, they are an unbelievable help to me. Um, even the fire department, I've worked with them as well. I, I can't say enough about those guys. There aren't enough of them, and they go out of their way to help me every day. So while we're throwing out kudos, I just yep. didn't want to not say that. Board, any comments? No, just, uh, just a quick, I was at the liaison for a while. I know Sean's it now, but we've witnessed some of the stuff that you guys have to deal with, and it is mind-boggling. So it's to think that it would be a quiet department is is, is completely wrong. And it's interesting. It, it's it's very interesting, and it's very it's not only uh, pet related; it's owner related. So you you really have to have that police connection to it you on do. a lot of the cases that you're dealing with. So um, having seen it firsthand. You know, you guys do a great job with the issues that you deal with that I, I was unaware of the complexity of some of the stuff that you deal with. And obviously, the shelter, you know, we were all at the opening down there. It's a great facility, but not only for the town of Situate, it's the only one in the area. So Situate actually provides a service at a bare minimal cost for all of our surrounding towns for their animal care. So it's really a, a you know, a public service that, that we, that the town provides to our surrounding communities as well. So. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Kim, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Uh, next, the Board of Selectmen. I think, Kim, are you going to present that? <coughs> you can sit anywhere you'd like, believe me. I think we get uh, no, I have a lot of questions, so it's going to have like that. Go slow. Kim, come sit here. I just sit. Yeah. <laughs> got to get in the hot seat, Kim, for these questions. Jenna, she's going to move. John. Uh, oh. up how much we can please. Take your picture. I think everyone <laughs> probably has it now. Kim, what's if you'd... What's your name, man? <laughs> <laughs> if you'd be good enough to read the mission statement. This department maintains the Chief Executive Office of the Board of Selectmen who oversee the efficient and orderly operation of town government. The department carries out all administrative duties of the Board of Selectmen, such as appointments, policies, licensing, bi-weekly public meetings, town meeting, and serves as a link between the board and the residents of the town. Thank you. I, I don't think there's anybody in town better suited to speak uh, of the effectiveness of the selectman's office, more than the selectman, than we are as far as the work that Kim's, Kim does <coughs> uh, to put this all together and, and it make it work week after week. So I publicly would like to thank you and open it up to the board. I repeat that, and, and yeah. Kim, you know, sometimes we say that we get the backlash from things that go wrong. Kim gets 10 times more of the backlash yeah. than any of us get it, and she, uh, dulls it down with an email to us, tell, you know, directing us in the right direction. So you're most of the time the uh, sounding board for a lot of people. Um, in terms of the budget, it's actually going down over the prior year by a couple thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. And the majority of it, um, actually, I'll, Rick just mentioned it to me a second ago, and I, I won't steal your thunder. No, go for but, it. Go but for it. But the majority of it is, uh, is the legal expenditures that the town goes goes through. So of the $240,000 worth of budget, more than half of it is our legal bills. Right. And that deals with, you know, Kim's a liaison for all of those as well. And we've got some good reporting in, in place now so we see how much money we're spending on each incident. But um, the town would be shocked, I think, if it knew how much money we spent on, on some of the causes that we're involved with every day um, as we shake our heads every time we get the legal bills from these people. But it's, uh, that is literally the majority of our budget. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to note also that the majority of those legal bills that's my point are, are not uh, something that we initiate uh, we get sued <laughs> and mm -hmm. we have to defend ourselves and that's where probably 90 percent of that legal budget comes from not from us necessarily uh, but us having to defend the, mm -hmm. the interests of the town and so not from actions that this board has taken as well it's no, just, the legal absolutely. budget for the town 
for all the town departments yeah. comes through this budget. So and just zoning, on conservation, anybody else who's doing a good job and ends up getting, you know, unfortunately sued for one reason or another, that's where this ends up getting, getting, um, getting uh, expensed. Another question I had, Kim, just um, you do so much work with ABCC and all the licensing and stuff, but how much of your time is is that is to, I know licensing comes in clumps but mm -hmm. but still even throughout the year you get a lot of questions about that and I'm always impressed by how much you know about ABCC stuff and so on because you're our you know internal expert on that but how much time is that uh, from you it seems to be an awful lot but uh, I guess percentage wise it's maybe 40 to 50 percent um, licensing um, yeah. between what's year end and generating the licenses. Right throughout the year. Um, I'm lucky to have a very able assistant in Judy Gilligan who has yep. really taken over a fair amount of that as well. Yep. But one of the things we are going to be looking into, and we've already started to compile some information from surrounding towns, are fees that the town of Situate doesn't currently um, ah. uh, install or, yeah, or assess, charge, yeah. assess. Yeah. Um, and that's for uh, administration of a lot of different things such as change of manager or transfer of license and all of that type of thing. Uh, other towns really charge a, a fair amount for those items, and we never have. So uh -huh. uh, we are looking into that and, and getting some benchmarks from surrounding towns on that. So oh, That's great. Right I look now. forward to hearing about that for sure. Go on. Just Thanks, briefly. Man. I have no questions, Kim, of you. I just got a kick. You know, <laughs> nobody asked the question about it, but everybody's defending the legal costs. I, the one thing that was <laughs> hit on was is that you know, we talk about a lot of enforcement action, and you know, that, that's, you know, we can talk about different departments, why they're not enforcing. If the departments begin to enforce certain things, those costs for litigation will go up. Absolutely right. So mm -hmm. people got to understand why they can look at our budget and say, oh, geez, you know, that's pretty high. You know, there's a cost for enforcement because once the town takes action, you mm -hmm. could expect those costs to go up maybe 50%. That's right. It could go more. Right. Who knows? Right. So, you know, it's a difficult task that we walk, but we're, we're trying to deal with legal costs and keep them down. But if people complain, suggest that you got to enforce things, those costs are going to go up too. So just keep that in mind. Sean, anything? No, I don't have any questions for her. Thank you. No comments. No, Kim, thank, thank you. you. Uh, town Administrator's budget. <coughs> What's your Tony? Town Administrator's budget. Tricia. Should I read my mission statement? Please. To provide continuous evaluation of town programs and services, provide adequate revenues for support of these programs, and to maintain an adequate financial reserve for unseen, unforeseen events or economic downturns. To manage day-to-day -day activities, departments, and staff that ensures professional, equitable, and courteous service delivery to residents and constituent groups at the most efficient cost. Thank you. That says it all. John? I have one question. How, how is it that you had <coughs> requested a number and then granted yourself a number less? That was what you recommended. <laughs> <laughs> how do you request in one hand and then I to make it look the good. other? Yeah. That was less than what no, you requested. No, I mean, requested. you know, as the board didn't know and, and, and Kim didn't point out, is you folks have taken a cut in your budget as well. And, um, but, you know, the budget is, is uh, evergreen. And I want to establish a history of what I think I really need. Okay. But in the context of having the balance of budget, um, there's two really big areas where I had to cut funds that I was loath to do, um, but we just, you know, we, we need to do it to balance. That's all. I, know. I think, uh, you know, the role of the town administrator is, has been important, major, since we since the town uh, voted that form of government probably 30 some odd years ago, but never more important than now. I think we all recognize that. Uh, the work that has to be done by a town administrator in order to, to, to make this whole process work is so much more than I think we ever envisioned 30 years ago or people ever envisioned 30 years ago. And we've been very, very fortunate in our, uh, uh, our town administrators, and that's certainly set up before. It certainly speaks for the current town administrator. Comments, the board? 
Just a quick comment on the budget itself that this does include a little bit of legal uh, expenditure in this as well for labor negotiations and labor council. Is that an is that a, a retainer type thing or is that a hourly? It's it's per occurrence. Yeah, um, and I reoriented that line item yeah, so it looks a little different because I really that account we were expending out of accounts that really weren't appropriately labeled and Mary and I have, and Sheila have cleaned up some of those so that's a new header for that right. mm -hmm. and um, so other things will come out of that but our new labor council is more than the previous and we have five expired union contracts so um, you know this year and next year depending on where we shake out you know. Right. I hope that's right. enough. That was my point is that, yeah. that there are a lot of contracts up for this fiscal yeah. year, so that that's uh, is that an adequate amount? <laughs> at best guess at this point. Um, another thing on conference and meetings, I see historically it's been zeros, and this year obviously we put it in there. Mary, was that just under a different yep. line item yeah, last? Yeah, we reoriented so it's more correct. The train. Not good English, is it? Or or right. Yeah. And then training's been zeroed out. Conferences was part of training before. Okay. And and just uh, one item below that is technical services. Just what happened in in '09? Did that was that a one-time blip or was a fifteen thousand dollar expense or did that get moved to a different line item? Sheila, do you know which that one was? For fifteen thousand, is that the audit? Is that okay? Okay. 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 Further comments on the town administrator's budget? Just right. as, as Trisha mentioned, it went down. You know, it's it's uh, up a little bit over the prior year, but down from what the request was by about ten thousand dollars. So, a two hundred thousand dollar budget up about um, eight or nine thousand dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is <coughs> the administration of the town administrator's office. Sheila Manning, Sheila, thank you for coming in. Uh, again, it goes without saying, but, but you're the front line, I think, so often you would come on dealing with so many problems from A to Z, and we thank you for that. But if you would uh, uh, read the mission statement, we'd appreciate it. The role of the town administrator's office is to provide services to residents in a professional, courteous, and timely manner. Also, to work cooperatively with municipal employees, elected officials, and board and committee members, resolving problems and implementing policies and procedures. Thank you. Comments from the board? The, the part time salaries in this, obviously, you're in the other budget, the town administrator, but what is this? Is this for the person that sells the stickers and that sort of stuff? Well, the part time salaries is for the recording secretaries, for the Nighttime boards okay. and committees. Okay, that's right. And then the seasonal salary um, was the town clerk. I mean the uh, c uh, sticker clerk. Right, and I see that's been zero. Yeah. So who's selling the stickers? Well, we are going to um, look at online option, um, and also with the mail-in sticker program, the the role of the sticker clerk really has diminished greatly, and it's mostly at this point just data entry, which maybe a senior from the senior tax program could do and so we decided that um, you know she isn't quite as busy as she used to be with the mail-in program right. so um, we just decided to eliminate her okay. so this budget then the technical services portion of it the, the budget drops to almost half of what well, was last year did the, that um, go to that was the audit and now that's in Mary's County. budget right Great. Thank you. Further comments from the board? Other than the senior tax program, I wish there was some way that we as a town could try to, I, I want to say exploit it, but, you know, uh, uh, encourage and try to get more 
participation. That's not for you, Sheila. That's just in general. Um, but you know, it'd be great if there was some way that we could do that, and get some kind of um, encouragement from different people who are looking to try to donate their time, but also get some kind of benefit by it, which would be their reduction in taxes to some degree. But in any event, that's all. Can I ask one other quick question? Yeah, I, I, I'm circular, but in the repair and maintenance item, which is also the big reason why it got cut in half, that must have gone to another treasurer collector's budget. That went to treasurer's. And what is that? Is that copy? That was the maintenance of the um, the program that the treasurer collector's office and the assessor's office uses. So um, it's going to come but out of the budget belongs. now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Makes it. Thank, thank you. you. Further questions to the board? Comments? Sure, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much. Uh, IT, information technology. We have an IT department? 155. I just had it. Give me a second to find <laughs> it. Um. <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit with the board about what I'm proposing in the FI 11 budget. And um, I think if, if you read the budget message, the theme of the whole budget, and also the feedback um, that I received from department heads is our technology operations. Uh, and the way we coordinate them and manage them from a business operations standpoint is almost non-existent. Employees um, have been left to their own resources and skill abilities or whatever to sort of um, purchase computers, servers, software, programs, vendors, service agreements. Mary um, receives, I believe, $2,500 a year as a stipend to sort of troubleshoot problems, but also really what I see that is doing is maintaining the integrity of our server. <coughs> it was one of the most surprising things that I found when I came to the town. Um, and not the first that I've encountered, but one that I was surprised. Um, I think it's very, very important to establish an IT department uh, with a person in it. Um, the budget number proposed commences that somewhere around January or February. So it's not a fully funded position in FY11. It would be in FY12 if it flies. Um, that's for a number of reasons. One is because um, we don't have the money to do a fully funded position given the budget constraints, but um, department heads in the budget message notes that um, other budgets were cut more in order to carve this um, 32,000, I think, out to begin a salary. A salary should be around the 65 dollars to $75,000 range. January, February, again, to go back is because we'll soon be putting a committee in place, an IT committee in place, to really get into the weeds of this stuff and analyze issues and find out what department needs are and what we need as a a business operation, but also to service the public more. And we need to centralize all that. What I just passed on is all the different computer, software, service agreements, yeah. cost that's floating throughout the, your entire budget that you're reviewing. This is out of the general fund. This is no cable money. Um, the cable money is another um, uh, allocation. At a minimum, when we do the final budget, we want that, I'm going to centralize that all into one line item. That really needs to be centrally controlled and have central oversight. Um, my estimate is there's more than a full-time job there for one person to do. I do have benchmarking information. I have eight communities to benchmark that we have. Um, and as you'll see, it's a mixed bag. Of the eight communities, four of them have one, at least one and a half FTEs in an IT department, or the other four contracted out. Um, my experience and strong preference is that because the town has no 
in-house capability and has so much to do. Um, we really need someone here 40 hours a week to really start to address how we purchase PCs, scheduled replacement. Your board did the acceptable use policy because we have no controls really on how the, you know, employees are expected to be using them. So um, we've talked about this. I know you have a concern about it, but, um, you know, I'm happy to answer any questions. Just the comment that it, it appears, you know, from what you're saying, it's almost inevitable that we just cannot continue piecemeal, helter skelter. We're going to need someone to be to be, to be a control of all this. Right, and we've talked a lot about, I mean, a lot of what we do or the town does is risk assessment. Yeah. And, w you know, we really need to be secure about the methods and means that we're using um, to do our operations. And then, you know, the whole other thing is, you know, the website, yeah. online payments, things that are available to our residents. But we're a $62 million operation. The town side is, you know, half of that. And we don't have the same systems you would find in any company. Yep. And, and that's particularly, of con that's a very significant concern to me. And this is really um, something that I said, you know, I've made a priority in this budget at the expense of other things, but I, I absolutely believe it needs to be done. And I think it will be welcomed by staff and having somebody here with the expertise that's well beyond anybody uh, working for the town right now to do. Thank you. Comments from the board? Uh, it, other than it's, it's, it's long overdue. I mean, I'm surprised we don't have a mimeograph and a, a record player listed here, frankly. So, I mean, it's just, it's something, did, given the, fi you know, we can go back. Given the financial situation, this is something the town's got to spend money to deal with. To make it more efficient and more accessible, right. that's Sorry. really the bottom line. And if you look at that list that I just gave you of how decentralized it is in each department and every department head being responsible for something that should be an enhancement or uh, an efficiency for them to do their core mission, then, you know, you think of how much less productivity we have around that. And Mary is spending significantly more time with the server being down, trying to keep up with firewalls and antivirus software. Our licenses are outdated. Um, and so, you know, she really needs to be more of a financial person, too, because I'm putting that demand on her as well. Yeah. Rick, do you have a comment? Yeah, I totally support this. Um, you know, as you know, I've spoken to you about it. Uh, if there's anything I can do to help, I do work on relational databases as part of my job. I do a lot of work with networking, different platforms, and so on. But this is one of those things where you have to spend money to save money. And uh, I think this is going to reap financial benefits in excess of whatever we end up paying this person. I really do. And they'll also have financial benefits that we probably won't even be able to identify and quantify just in terms of overall efficiency and operations. Uh, so you got my two million percent support on this. Um, this is also including, I mean, it's going to not only be for internal, but also help public access to records and, and to things like that in the context of permitting software and other things like that. Well, long term, if there's long -term. somebody yeah, here yeah. charged with that function, and I did give you a job description, yeah. they would coordinate the GIS. I mean, part of the reason our GIS isn't as running as it is now is not because it was a bad decision. It's just you have three folks sort of doing it that right. have full-time other jobs. Right. And yeah, my, my, my hope on this is that this will also really increase public access to records about their own properties and other properties they might be considering buying, uh, conservation permits, zoning permits, all this sort of thing, because through no fault of the departments, but you know, there's records downstairs and files and so on, and people just don't know what's going on. <coughs> and I think if we can use this not only to help increase the efficiency and the services and the communication within town hall, but also in terms of expanding public, uh, public access and uh, citizen access to things, I think it's a really great thing to do. Thank you, Rick. Yes, Chair. Can you Just a, a quick comment. I, I, you said this is like a half, you, like halfway through the year you'd hire somebody. Yeah, I thought it yeah. did like a six month. Yeah. I mean, I guess my concern would be, can you get someone for that price with the level of expertise that you're looking for? Um, you know, that 
Mm. Well, again, that's, I mean, the salary would be whatever the salary is based on our classification plan. Um, it's just you can't hire without a, an appropriation, right. so the full year appropriation would be that six months. Right. But then right after that, we'd be into the FY12 budget, and you'd see full salary. Right. But even if you, even if you doubled it, you know, you said yes, and I know. Right. And there but are. The other, the other thing is that there are companies for <coughs> the risk portion of it, you know, servers up and all that sort of stuff. There are companies that are out there that, that do that on a per server basis or on a right. per. And yeah. I'm not looking to build an IT department with three people. I really am looking for someone for two years to really build and, you know, create an environment that we know is. <laughs> Looking at this as trying to build a brand new department, I'm looking as one person for a few years to get us where we should have been. In all honesty, four or five years ago. And then, and then that person would work himself out of a job. Is that how you see it? We'll have to cross that bridge when we come to it. I mean, someone still needs to review our contracts, troubleshoot the server, um, make sure that um, our acceptable use policy is being followed, train staff on new applications. I mean. Technology, I can't keep up with mm -hmm. it, and you shouldn't expect, you know, we shouldn't expect our department heads to have the expertise which we can't even understand. So, um, I, I, I would, on the, the reverse, yeah, again, Tricia, you're going to be managing it. You're, you're, you're looking at overseeing it, but I certainly, with a, 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 with a budget of over fifty million dollars, if we have an IT person. I, I'd be inclined to say that you might need an IT person indefinitely, and if it turns into a, one or two people in an IT department, I don't see why a mis municipality of the size shouldn't have one. So, I, it, whatever you decide as you go through, I mean, we'll I'm open-minded. You know, yeah, first we exactly. Have to do take the first step. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So, I think over overwhelmingly, the board sees the need for it and supports it. You know, my concern is, you know, do you get the level of um, technical experience that you're looking for for that number and, and I, I think, think that's that a valid concern but we won't know till we ask the question right. and that the money comes first because you don't want a kid coming out of college yeah. building your structures for you know obviously they have to have a little bit of yeah. Steve yeah. job thank you for that okay. and just for for yeah. notes that is in the budget <clears throat> that is uh, uh. A, a line item in here All that's in the budget that ties out to the revenue projections that we've done so this is a, a, lot, a budget that's going from zero to 30 32 35 thousand um, dollars that's, you know, that's a step balance forward budget. and Mary <laughs> kept trying to when we were trying to balance she said well you still have that IT money you still have that and actually Tony that's when the other budget in the town administrators budget dropped because I could really use that in Labor Council, but this was more important, so I cut it. Right. Cable television. This is just informational yep. for the board because we have the newly formed Cable Advisory Committee yep. and that we still need some folks on, I think, um, to really get going. This is um, just, and I want to give John an opportunity. He put all this together uh, as our independent contractor that we would hand to the committee as sort of a starting point to sort of do the kinds of things that um, <coughs> is outlined in the charge that the board approved from them. But I, I wanted to give you a footprint to just, you know, since this is yep. going to come on board in some fashion or some permutation in FY11, that you saw what they're trying to do. And, and, and like I said, John worked with Vinny and did a really good job on it. Thank you, John. <laughs> Uh, insurance? The only comment on that, sorry, Go ahead. Um, is that that's money that is coming from Comcast. Yep. So it's not, that's right. not it's, gem, yeah. it's really a revenue source that's coming in that's, that's that has never been in the budget before, mm -hmm. which is now going to be shown. Thank you. Insurance? 192. Insurance, I believe, is up 2% as recommended by the insurance agent, plus an additional allowance. Um, the way the general liability budget has been funded in the past is 
there was no additional appropriation for deductibles. And in the, in the short time that I've been here, you know, when we had claims, between 5000 or 7500 for deductible, um, there hasn't been an additional allocation in that line item. So that's why it's up over the 2% plus a cushion for payment of deductibles. Could you explain that? So what, we had a low deductible, so now you've raised it? No, no, the deductibles stayed the same, but the budgetary line item just said, okay, here's our general liability renewal for FY10, and it's X. And it didn't have anything for when a claim was made, and we had the insurance company had to respond, and we have to pay the deductible. Right. Okay. So. All right. So that, that was never in the budget. Our, the expenditure to the company was 460 but if we had a claim, we had to pay the first $500. It could and that have been there, Tony, because... Um, the insurance budget has remained flat, so your renewal was probably lower and was eating some of those deductibles. That hasn't been the case, and we're transferring year-end now to cover those, and there's no money now, and I'm expecting a few deductibles to come. So this, again, is not as much as I would like, but it's a start. So. And just so people know, the insurance that's covered here is our liability, auto, umbrella, Comp, no, not comp. Um, Law enforcement. Marine. Employment. Um, right. So everything but comp. Everything but comp. Yep. And unemployment. For the entire town, school included. <coughs> Further comments from the board? Just that I'm hearing you correctly. In other words, you're, you're including the deductibles for the, those claims that we now know that we have no, to. No, not. That's an okay. FY10 problem. But FY11 going forward, I'm putting a cushion in the appropriation Just on the option. for gotcha. claims that might happen 18 months from now. And assuming if the claims don't happen, then that cushion, would it go back to the general yeah, fund? But Is there's that not a, a lot in there. Right. I mean, that's really would only cover one. The, what I put in there, I think, would cover one property and one employer's liability. I, uh, could, I could see why it wasn't put in then, because they don't know what the amount's going to be until it actually a claim's made. Then you have to appropriate it in the future. Which makes sense, but our reserve fund. Reserve fund. That's what it has. You have to pay take it, it out of there. Right. Right. Yes, it is. Yeah, it covers the enterprise funds also. Yeah. And they forgot to pick it up from the direct cost. Okay. Rick. Um. So if the town acquires a new building or um, a new park is built or something that like MBTA land was given to us or something and so we're now responsible for covering the insurance on something happens on that, mm -hmm. does that increase our insurance rates? Um, what it does is it will increase them on the renewal yep, but the not in real time. Not in real time. So we, it's my responsibility to add them to the statement of values and put an assessed value on it. Yep. Um, but that won't be reflected until the renewal, which will look at how much new how property much we have we're and insuring okay. and also how many claims we've had. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Further from the board? Thank you. Uh, unemployment and workers' comp. We'll wrap it up. Unemployment. Unemployment has been increased back to the amount that it was originally uh, appropriate, appropriated for for FY10 until we reduced it at the special town meeting. Uh, given the uncertainty about a lot of things in terms of the town budget and um, unsettled contracts, um, mm -hmm. I think at a minimum it needs to go back to the $300,000 amount for FY11. Makes sense. Comments from the board on unemployment? Uh, I think it, we b should be conservative about it, and as you say, doing just that, we are. And then if we end up being wrong, that's great. Yeah, un unfortunately, the, um, the unemployment number works, and the, and the workman's comp number are mm -hmm. going to be, mm -hmm. you know, working. related. Yep. Like. Um, you know, I mean, federal taxes are going to be working um, in opposite directions. So if people are unemployed, then the town's not going to have the federal tax expense, but it is going to have the unemployment expense. So um, we did a big analysis on this and looked at all the 
all the bills that we're getting now and tried to follow what time period people would be covered through. Um, and this is particularly important as we look at the budget, as we've talked about for the school, um, it's considerably over budget. And, and as they've said in, in various discussions, that their cuts would have to come through people, which would have the biggest impact on, on this expense. So, um, you know, it may end up being that that isn't even enough. Workers comp. Workers compensation. Um, a little bit of detail here. When a town establishes a trust fund for workers compensation, it should have an ultimate fund goal, and um, so you appropriate rather large sums of money into it to you establish the fund balance, and then. Typically, the interest generated from that can pay your administrative cost any given fiscal year. So um, we've been putting 160000 into the workers' compensation trust. Um, but the, the section of the statute that the town accepted when it created the trust is not a typical one. Um, what happens is um, Mary has to wipe out any surplus every year and put it in a special revenue fund. And then if the account runs short or whatever, we can <coughs> go to that special revenue fund. It can't be expended out for any other purpose other than workers' comp. The section that um, I'm recommending, and we'll talk about the non-monetary one articles that I want to go to town meeting, just allows all the funds and all the interest to stay with the, with the fund, and it regenerates it so that the interest will pay for the third-party administration and the stop-loss insurance on it. And, and, and that's how you do it. All that being said, this account is very underfunded. We're expending more out of it than we're appropriating in. And we're whittling down what's not even near the fund balance yet. It should be about $750,000. Um, you have to remember when you self-fund workers' compensation insurance, if you have one employee who's 35 years old and is disabled due to a work injury, that is the town's dollar. That is the town's responsibility to pay their salary or whatever is eventually settled out uh, when they take a disability retirement. So when people think that that's a really high number or that's a, an account that money doesn't need to be appropriated into, that's really what you have to think in terms of it. Next month, we'll overlay that account with the stop loss insurance policy so that the town's maximum exposure will be limited. That stop loss will cost premium will cost twenty to thirty thousand, but it will limit in an aggregate the town's maximum exposure if somebody should have an ongoing claim. Now we have workers' compensation injuries, in injuries that you know if somebody gets injured through some fault of the town or in their job as a town employee, we have an obligation to pay those medical bills and that salary. Those medical bills are all being paid out of the workers' compensation trust, and if someone has an expectation that they can return to work, we continue that, and that can go more than a year, sometimes more than two years. So when you think of medical bills for one claim, then you, the amount that's funded in that trust fund starts to really make sense at the, at the level. So I've increased the appropriation to that uh, this year, and um, Again, would like to have more, but again, we need to start sort of addressing that. Just, just quickly, <clears throat> does uh, you mentioned? I thought long term, is the, the, this fund doesn't pay for long term like disability. So if, if somebody's injured as a result of a worker's comp injury here on, on on the job, you know, my my understanding is in private sector that goes for a period of almost five years and then. Consequently, they lump sum it or they ended up five right. years. But is that the same with municipal? Yes, that's okay. what we do. But the lump sum would be paid out of the workers' compensation trust gotcha. fund yep. and the lawyer yep. and all that. And yep. So when you think of that, that's can, why we I really actually need can to see how it's The other no. thing, though, is it's liquid. So if there should be a catastrophic event in the town and the stabilization fund and the reserve fund or whatever, we can move some of that. Um, it's liquid. Okay. And Moody's looks at that in terms of when you have reserves, you can say, well, that's true, but there's also another million in our workers' compensation. That's another thing you want to do. But that's going to change, Trisha. Isn't that what you just said a minute ago? You're going to pick up a policy yeah. that would step in. Right. 
right. But that's per occurrence. 20, 30,000 per occurrence. It would be whatever we set the threshold that any any occurrence, the stop loss would kick in at 50 or 75. Oh, okay. Right. I think no, the I last I saw that. at 75, the premium was still $25,000. Yeah, right. right. But it's really important that we have it. Mm -hmm. We've never had that before. I don't know. Mary thought I we did. We did it one time. I thought we did. We had a stop loss. Of, I forget what the amount was for. And then we didn't anymore. But again, the thing that we, we would do at town meeting is, is flip the, ex the section of the statute we accepted. So we're not cleaning it out every year. The money just stays. Just keep it there. Make it's it a nice. housekeeping thing. Um, we really we thought it might have been a typo. But, um, but when we look back at the minutes and stuff, um, we, we need to change that. Yeah, just a quick question, Mary. It, historically, I mean, you can just look at the numbers here. We used to put eighty thousand dollars a year in it, and then, right. then two years ago, we doubled it to one sixty. But four hundred thousand was always the base that Rick was working on for that reserve fund. Yeah, I thought it was about four hundred thousand, or maybe more. And I think he used to have a stop loss, and I forget what the amount was. And then, for some reason, he dropped it. How much money is in that? Because obviously, we've had to increase it because we've been. Ended. 172000 in that that used to be 400 mm -hmm. Well, look at all our expenses over the year. That's my concern. We were only appropriating 80000 but we're spending 122000 Another 80000 So again, 200000 seems like a lot of it's money, but it's only a $40,000 increase, and we need to step it up to get that. Well, you, yeah, I mean, well, we don't think we have... We used to not have many workman's comp claims. So it'd be interesting to see which it's claims. It's not frequency, it's duration. No, I know. But yeah. when we used to put 80 in it, and 80 covered it and put more into that fund. And now, well, we can talk about the details later as to what it, what it is, but it's, surpri it's surprising that we doubled it and we still are dipping into the fund but two of the claims we had if we had stop loss they'd be in the stop loss now mm -hmm. and our, that's why we want to risk our maximum exposure so we so, didn't have stop loss so we know yes we have four long-term claims right now makes sense it doesn't take too many of those to yeah no, that's my right. point. so yeah. just in light of that are you having someone look at all of our insurance? I mean, if we, do, that seems like something that's pretty clear that we should have had, a stop loss policy for our comp stuff. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've had workers' comp trust funds before, so that was one of the first things I looked. And we have, you have to code every employee category and stuff like that. And so it will be in place probably next month. We just sent the application. Mm -hmm. But my, my bigger point is, is someone just looking at all of our policies in general to make sure that there's no, you know, sometimes a fresh look at, we've probably just renewed, 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 renewed. Well, for workers' comp, Tony? No, no, for general in general, insurance. everything. Work was pretty sharp. Yeah, we can have a conversation about that. Yeah. I've looked at them. Yeah. Does anything else? Thank you. Vinny's here. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We've been waiting for this. Vinny. You're here for the IT, right? <laughs> Conservation. <laughs> Vinny, we're asking everyone to read the mission statement uh, off right at the bat just to give everyone a better idea of exactly what you do. Mission statement, the Conservation Department, to protect the natural environment of the town of Situate, including the coastline, floodplains, watersheds, and wetlands. From improper development for the health, safety, and well-being of the population and wildlife habitat. To implement to the fullest extent possible the charges contained in the Town of Situate Wetlands Bylaw, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, and the Town of Situate Open Space and Conservation Plan. Thank you. Thank you. You do a lot with very limited office as far as personnel is concerned. Uh, one thing that jumped out at me, and it, as far as uh, the uh, Wetlands Bylaw, Commonwealth of Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, you state that, you know, to, let me read it here, to the fullest extent possible, okay? 
And I guess, what does that mean? A chance of floating the slip? Chance? I don't know. Uh, you know, is it? I mean, you do what, what you can do with, with the resources you have and yeah. the environment you're living in. I mean, uh, if you're going to go and enforce the speed limit on Route 3A, you enforce it to the fullest extent possible. Yeah, yeah. There are people that are speed and there's people that are going to get by, but you, you do the best you can with the resources you have. Yeah. Similarly, in, the, in, in these, these type of uh, resource protection and uh, permitting programs and enforcement, you know, uh, programs, you run up against the same obstacles. So mm -hmm. you do the best you can. Best you, you can. hope that the way you manage the department and you interact with the, uh, with, with the uh, applicants and with the citizens read that you have a good result out of it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Comments from the board? Joe? Rick, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, on these uh, goals, I was interested, there's a goal four, to rejuvenate and rededicate Teak Sherman Park. That's correct. One of the smaller parks under the jurisdiction of the commission. I must admit, it, I've never heard of this park. <laughs> well, Where is this if, park? Well, if you have two minutes, we can walk across the street, and it's right over there. There's a small parking lot diagonally across the street, right across from the church. Yeah, okay. And that is a trail that's attached that and goes actually to an agricultural field that the DPW mows. Yeah, okay. And uh, as a matter of fact, we, we, we have been working in the last uh, couple of months on this. The Teak Sherman family, Teak Sherman was one of the original water commissioners. Mm -hmm. And Carl Pipes at the time thought it was important to dedicate a piece of property so his name would be remembered. His family is in the process of writing a book about T. Sherman and his life and situate in, situate in those days. And so we're trying to coordinate this modest effort in rededicating the park to the release of the book. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna try, we're not talking about spending a whole lot of money, we're gonna try to get volunteers together and spruce it up. Another aspect of this which, which, which came up about, uh, about a month, month and a half ago, Penny Pipes, one of our commission members, started to talk to me about putting a quote unquote victory guard on the property over there. Um, and your last selectman's meeting, you had somebody right. you're talking about it. She's contacted those people, and they're going to go view the site uh, this week, and I think we're going to be able to do something cooperatively with them. All right, cool. Um, you learn something new every day. Uh, thanks for that. Um, goal six. It's one of the reasons to put a sign on it. Yeah, yeah, right, so exactly. So somebody knows it's there, yeah. yeah. Update the town of Situa Coastal Access Plan, Driftway Park, and the Spit. Um, one of the things that came up with the police department earlier today, or earlier tonight, was the spit and about enforcement out there and all that sort of stuff, which you're familiar with. And I also recall there was some letters we received from the state about maintaining the, or adequately protecting the piper, piping plovers. Those, those, those are issues that we will be dealing with. We don't intend to redo the whole coastal access plan all over, yeah. but focus in, uh, and we discussed this at our meeting the other night, focus in on what do we want to do next in the interior of the park? I mean, we have conceptually putting different elements in there, like an outdoor classroom and a uh, some type of performance area in there. That's at the park. In the park. Yeah. But the, ele it, but the other element yeah. is what's happening in the spit and the conflicts between human activity and right. the wildlife habitat. Right. And what is the plan for main for protecting the plovers? We haven't reached that point yet. I mean, we, we just started the discussion. It's going to be on our agenda at our next meeting. Okay. Uh, I should say it was postponed. I think you were there last night because Tony wasn't going to be able to be there. Yeah, and he's the one. Yeah, uh, so he'll be at the is, next. Is, is, is okay. Working so it's going to be on. I think it was data. Whatever. But yeah, yeah, whatever okay. it is. And we'll have our discussion. Start our discussions that'll move ahead. Yeah. Now then, with the driftway, and I came a little late to last night's meeting. I remember uh, you were talking about the driftway park stuff with the amphitheater and the pavilion and things like that. And you're working with some consultants on that. No? <coughs> okay. I think we're at a point where we can do this ourselves. Okay. I mean, we have we have a framework, a basic coastal access plan. We have the elements. When it comes to actually going to a design feature, then yeah. we have to get somebody in. But to decide which feature we want to move with, whether they're still valid, which ones we looked at five years ago. Now, the commission certainly is capable of going and, and looking yep. at those things. Uh, and that would also involve, as we have in the past, some kind of public in input, have some kind of public workshops yeah. on it to get, you know, what, what the people want in there. Yeah. And then the only other question I had for you, Vinny, was the um, new stormwater bylaws. Mm -hmm. How's that going in terms of communication with you, Laura Neal, and, and de facto implementation with applicants that come before the commission? Well, we always re review the stormwater on our, on our applications 
already. Right. But is the, are the new bylaws causing innumerable headaches, moderate headaches, no headaches, or, um, or what? What's up with it? Scale of, scale of one to ten. Yeah, scale of one to ten, I guess. Well, it's been promulgated, though. I mean, in a, in a, in a, in a, like I say, we, we've always done those things. And so, I mean, this is going to require us, one of the reasons we have to do our wetland regs is to incorporate those into our regs so that they're all there. But we've always done it. So it hasn't put any increased burden on the commission, and we haven't been looking at it further. Uh, I, I think uh, properties that are outside of our jurisdiction uh, it certainly has had some positive impact on different properties and stuff yeah. like that. Okay. All right. Good. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. Any further questions from the board? Tony, did you? I just just wanted to note that the overall budget is lower than last year's appropriation, so it's um, you know coinciding with all the other departments pretty much that we've looked at. Today. Just, just briefly, uh, Vinny, I was just curious. I know that one of your goals was to do for more ADA accessibility. Um, American with Disabilities Access. And mm -hmm. my question is, with respect to the end of the um, bike path on, on the driftway, have, 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 have you addressed those issues? With as far as I know, they've all been addressed. Have they been addressed? The boulder and all that stuff. Correct. So that yeah. now they are. Okay. Great. And the other thing was, I didn't see as a goal the amphitheater, but I understand you've been discussing it, at least with the ComCom. -Com. It's great. It's great to hear. Look forward to seeing more on that. Thanks. Further discussion from the board? Having none. Vinny, thank you for coming in. Thank you, Chairman. Thanks. That concludes for this evening the uh, budget reviews. We thank everyone for coming in and, and presenting it. Uh, the next item is a review of non monetary town meeting articles. What I'm going to ask Trisha to do, she has them more or less just to give them to us. We, and, and the, not that we'd have any discussion on it tonight because. Some of the proponents aren't here, or, or, or I'd rather us just take them, <coughs> look them over. We'll, we'll, God knows we'll be discussing these uh, a lot more in the months to come. So Tricia could just either give us a copy or put something in our box and let us know what those articles are. You have them in your packet. They're in the packet. The summary. Six. A. Uh, as we can see, there's, there's <coughs> quite a few of them. Uh, some of them are repetitive with the dealt with them in the past. Others aren't. Uh, how would the board like to proceed with this? Well, I'm not sure we're not going to vote them. If you, does anyone have any one of the articles that, well, I, I, that they feel worth discussing, or all of them, if you want? I just thought. Um, I guess one one I had was redraft the zoning map. Yeah. Are we actually going to be doing that? I didn't. My understanding was it may be there, but I know the special bylaw review is not dealing with it. I don't think anybody. It'd be great. We need it. We need it done. But I don't. I didn't know whether or not is anybody addressing that. I know the planning board had it. This was a request that came from the planning board, okay. um, and again, because the deadline is so early, they just wanted to have the Put it there. holder, yeah. so it could drop off, John. The um, only other one I got, to, which I, I th certainly would love to see, is the double poles bylaw placeholder. <laughs> Let me tell you, I, I, I don't know who came up with it, but I'm like, great, I'm glad to see that. And for the people who understand, these are the uh, uh, telephone poles that are sistered. You know, when they, they come out, they cut one of them, they sister it up with the other, and they leave it there. And they don't change the wires or anything. And then they come to us and ask to change the poles, and it's, it, it's exasperating. Um, I just have a question about something that Kim brought up earlier during the discussion of the uh, selectman's budget about fees and so on, that we don't, this town doesn't charge a certain amount of fees on other things. Would that need to be... Um, if we were to institute fees on some of those things, does that need to be bylaw changes that would have to go through town meeting, or is that something we can just do? I don't know if it's a bylaw change. It's, it's a fee that would be, just, it would be set by the Board of Selectmen, just Great. as you said. Great. Fees. Yep, because I saw there was some other fees listed in here, so I just wanted to make sure we were capturing as much as possible there. As we said, some of these, some of these articles will go forward to, actually go forward to town meeting. Others will... 
uh, be withdrawn or fall by the wayside for one reason or another. Uh, but it's good to have them this early. Tony? A quick question on the, the second one at the end, the authorization for a betterment for the seawalls. Who, who, who asked to put that on? Al. Al did, okay. True. John? The maintenance to a private way bylaw, is that, could Al answer that question or can you? That would allow us to make certain improvements. Okay. And still not incur not liability. And not accepted as a public way, but just. Right. It, what we would need to do is, I think when Al talked about it, is the inverse of what we think actually needs to happen. We shouldn't be entering private ways now. Mm -hmm. So this bylaw would allow us to do certain improvements on private ways. Okay. All right. But they would still remain a private way. Yeah. All right. Someday they became a oh, public okay. yeah. Good. So that's what we're trying to sort of correct that. Thanks. And the, the Chapter 91, that, that was always a separate, wasn't that always a separate article? Yeah, it is, but it's mm -hmm. non-monetary. Okay, so, so that's just, can, uh, I see. So all yeah. the standard ones, like the revolving funds, well, I guess that's monetary. Yeah, yeah. right. There you go. Dominic. Are there citizen articles? Are any of these citizens articles? We did not receive any by the deadline. No. No one. What's what's happening uh, here? <laughs> thank you. Any more? If, if there are no more questions on the only point, you know, some of these, like if if the redrafting of the zoning map actually comes to fruition, we'd need a lot of time to digest that. So as soon as somebody gets information ready, yeah. if we, sooner That's we can get it. Yeah. To yeah. Annual license renewals. Uh, the next one? Uh, no, uh, four, four, four hours. hours. Four, hours. Four, hours. four hours with special elections. Like a motion? Love one. Move the board to select and vote to set the poll hours. The special election on Tuesday, January 19th, 2010, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the high school gymnasium. Second. Discussion? This is a, you know, the, uh, we're not. We're not getting paid by the state for this, are we? This is, we pay for it, right? This is they all did on our dime. It's a small amount, but it's not even what we normally expect, I think. So, what happens if we decide not to set the poll hours and we don't hold it? Because they're not going to pay for it. I'd love to see then if that happens. I think Secretary uh, Galvin would be calling Bernice. Our legal budget goes up. <laughs> <laughs> it does cost, though, what do we yeah. figure out over the years? Five to seven thousand dollars? Seven thousand dollars. To run the yeah. yeah. election? Yeah. Please come out and vote. Uh, vote. Second. Vote. Yep. Motion been made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is the drain layers license renewals. Will the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the following drain layers license for the year 2010? William Sestito, E.L. Margets and Sons, Inc., McGeckin Contracting, Inc., Iaria Brothers, Joseph P. Bonomi, P.F. Spencer, Jr., Inc., Spirito Environmental Services, R.B. Topman, Jr., and Hanson Fuel Company, Inc. Second. Motion to be made. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Other business? Starting with Sean, anything? Uh, it, well, Ronnie the, Jones, nine. Colin Vick, I think, Joe. Number nine. Number nine. Annual license. Uh, Move that the Board yeah. of Selectmen vote to renew the common Vicula's license for Ronnie Jones General Store for year 2010. Second. Uh, motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. Town administrator. You've heard from me enough. I've heard enough. <laughs> we never hear it. Thank you. Uh, other business now. Sean? Nope. John. Just briefly, I went down to the seawall down on Lighthouse Point, and I happened to see, or Lighthouse Road, and I did happen to see it. Um, I know there's some photographs floating around. I, one of the questions I had is, is there a possibility that we consider in the future maybe doing some kind of boring into that seawall to see the integrity of it? And I don't know what the cost would be, but um, if that's something, is there a possibility just to see what the cost would be to bore in maybe six feet to see if there's any instability in it? And I don't know what that is, but is that possible? I think, yes, Kevin and I had that conversation late, and I think we are going to be able to do that. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Good morning. Mr. Chairman, I'm delighted to report I have no other business this evening. So on I. Howdy. Just one quick uh, question for Trish. And oh, here we go. Yeah. The, there's... Uh, 
We've talked about this in the past, but hunting signage. It's hunting season now, and there's a few places in town that you can hunt. One of it is over um, in the marshes by behind Dunkin' Donuts there, and there was another one back in the West End, I believe. Um, there was an incident over the last couple of weeks where someone was jogging on one of those paths, and they were surprised by someone jumping out in camo with a shotgun. Um, so I know that we've spoken about that in the past. Who's in charge of getting those signs up so people are aware of the hunting areas in the town and they don't walk their dog during the stuff? On and town land. On, on town land. Yeah, I'll talk and to you the, And the season, you know, yeah. when it's open and when it's not open. Tony, thank you. And I have nothing. Uh, the next, uh, we will be going into... Uh, Executive session for the consideration of purchase exchange lease value of real property. Uh, after which time we'll be adjour adjourning. There'll be no uh, public session after this executive session. So thank you all for coming in. Kim? Can I? Yep. Yes. 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 Can I promise? Thanks, John.